by Tal ready for what should be Dick a low scoring competitive game certainly seems like that's the style of play of Tennessee and Kentucky and Big Blue Nation they have ridden a roller coaster with their team this season but it's been a roller coaster of late which is the real Tennessee and what Vols team will we see tonight that's certainly a big question well, Jekyll and Hyde, they're really a Jekyll and Hyde team. They blow out Missouri by 20. Then they come home and lose to Missouri at home. They go out and blow out Florida, get blown out by Florida. They come back and blow out Kansas. So what are we going to see? Will the real Tennessee team step up? I'll tell you one thing, though. They do play suffocating defense, and Kentucky's had a tough time scoring all year. How are they going to do against the number one defense efficiency by Ken Pomeroy when he looks at the balls? A Kentucky team that is 5 and 11, 4 and 5 in the league. They were off to a 3 and 1 start in the SEC and have now lost five of their last six. And more often than not, with three or four minutes to go in each of those five losses, they've been right there with a chance to win the game. And John Calipari has spoken about that frustration with a team that he believes is giving maximum effort, just not getting results for that effort. As Olivier Saar spins. And is way off the mark on the game's first shot. Here comes Santiago Vescovi. Well, a little interesting matchup when you look at Czar and you look at Pons. They played together on the French national team. And also, when you look at both guys, they played against each other in high school in France. So that'll be an interesting matchup. The problem with Czar is foul trouble, Bob. Always in foul trouble. Four of the five starters for Tennessee are lefties. And there's the only righty. Keon Johnson fades away and scores the game's first points after Isaiah Jackson for Kentucky picked up the game's first foul. Well, Keon Johnson, a very highly rated young player. They really believe he's got a great opportunity to have a tremendous future, and so does his partner back there, Mr. Springer. Boston at the elbow. That's too strong, and Eve Pons has the rebound. Boston's got to make shots. He wants to become a complete player. He cannot just utilize the drive to the goal. He's got to be better making a perimeter shot, taking good shots, stepping up, squaring his body. You know, Tennessee gives up only like 58 points a game. I mean, so really very tough to score. And Kentucky, one of their problems all year, Bob, has been the ability to score. Yeah, they're only averaging 67 and a half points a game. That's the lowest per game offensive average as Sars jump hook comes up short since the 1984-85 Cats. So wow. we're talking a, a long hit. time since uh, since a, a Kentucky team struggled to score the way this team has struggled to score this season, Dick. To your point. Well, I had a few years on my head at that time. I mean, back no, then, that's a lot of years. That's 36 no, I, years I, ago. I, I watched you. I was in grammar school back uh, then when you were about uh, uh, 10 or 12 years into your broadcasting career. <laughs> and welcome to Rupp Arena. After a thriller between North Carolina and Duke, the Heels survive a four-point win. But North Carolina and Duke playing out the way North Carolina and Duke normally will. There's Eve Pons throwing one down for a Tennessee team that is coming off of a very disappointing loss against Ole Miss on Tuesday night. Bob Shoes and a Dick Vitale here on a Saturday showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. And Dick Tennessee off to the early two-point lead. And now it will be a foul called away from the ball, it looks like, against Kentucky. You know, Pond's really a guy that's really active as could be. He was the lead defensive player last year, voted the number one defensive player in the league. And this year he's averaging 15 points a game as well. You know, he and Czar have a relation. They played together on the French national team and played against each other on the scholastic level when they were in France. Deion Johnson with a nice shot fake. And he knocks one down around B.J. Boston. Nice little start by Keon Johnson. He's a player they really feel has the world of potential. Foul call.
called on Vescovi. And when you caught up with Rick Barnes after that loss against Old Miss, what did he tell you his main concerns were coming into tonight? Toughness, toughness. He said, we're not tough enough. We got to be mentally tougher, physically got to be more aggressive, and we can't turn the ball over and miss one-on-ones, two of them that cost them big time against Ole Miss. Sar with a tough catch in traffic. Hands one off Keon Brooks for a wide open jumper. Yeah, Brooks got that little 12-foot mid-range shot. A lot of guys missed that shot. A turnover. Jaden Springer lost it. Davion Mint the other way. And he's fouled on his way to the cup, so he will shoot two. You know, talking to John Calipari, his frustration was around the fact that his team has been close. He said it's like six games that we were right there to win, and we didn't close out the games. We didn't close them out. And this has been a tough year for them. I mean, 5-11, and 11, Kentucky. Hey, Bob, what were the odds? Think about this. Before the season, if you looked at a preseason top 20, and somebody said they'd give you odds that Michigan State, Kentucky, Kansas and Carolina Well, I, I, I eliminate Carolina because they won today and the bottom line they're getting close But those teams I just mentioned the three of them. What are the odds of them not being in March Madness preseason? That's very real right now. I personally think when you look at Kentucky, there's only one way. There's only one way. They better hope there's an SEC tournament because they're going to have to win that unless a miracle happens and they run the table. And that's pretty tough to feel that can happen after watching them play most of the year. Well, a big step towards pulling off an upset tonight would be to pile up foul trouble against Tennessee. And that is what they are doing early on. As on the last trip down the floor defensively, John Fulkerson picked up his second foul. So now Fulkerson is on the bench with two, and just like that, his replacement, Olivia Kamwa, commits a foul as well. So you get some front court foul trouble with Eve Pons and Fulkerson. That could open a door for Olivier Saar to do some damage. Well, you know, those veteran players are so important, those seniors and those veteran guys, Pons and Fulkerson. That's one of the problems, getting them to be consistent. They were really good when we had them against Kansas. They were not really good in that game against Ole Miss. And Santiago Vescovi just picked up his second. So two of the more important starters for this Tennessee team have picked up two personal fouls, and we have not even reached our first media timeout. Fulkerson is already on the bench, and Vescovi's about to join him there. And Kentucky's wow. got the early lead. So John Fulkerson, a Wooden Award mid-season top 25 edition. And Santiago Vescovi, who was number one in the SEC in assist to turnover ratio. Both on the bench in foul trouble. Let's see how the depth of Tennessee now handles that. And coaches don't need, can't leave guys wide up. we got to make that layup. Josiah Jordan James, second effort gets it done. Yeah, Jordan James right there on the offensive glass. Second effort gets Another it Another foul on said. Kamwa. So Olivier Kamwa, who came in after Fulkerson picked up two, has inside of 30 seconds also picked up two fouls. Well, maybe he likes sitting on a pie. Maybe he likes sitting next to the coach. He wants to sit on a pie. Wow. Foul trouble early on for Rick Barnes. Rick Barnes balls. And ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy, the official sponsor of Getting Stuff Done. Welcome back to the Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. This is the SEC on ESPN. Bob Wachusen, Nick Vitale, a Saturday showcase already showcasing foul trouble for the Tennessee Vols. Bob Wachusen, Dick Vitale, and Dick, it'll be interesting to see how Rick Barnes, who is really a, a coach since he arrived at Tennessee that has given Kentucky all that they can handle, now handles this early foul trouble to his big men. You know, you make a good point there about Rick Barnes, one of the few coaches that has the edge on Calipari and head to head. He's up seven to five. He's beaten him twice in Lexington. He's beaten him four times down in Knoxville, and he beat him once on a neutral in the SEC tournament down in Nashville. So there aren't many guys that can claim that against John Calipari. DJ Boston at first denied. 
by Jaden Springer and his second shot sails out of bounds. So again, Tennessee has depth. They've got eight players that average at least 10 or more minutes per game, but Juroš Plavšić is not one of those players. And he has been called on to now come into the game early with John Fulkerson and Olivia Kamwa both picking up two fouls each in the first four minutes of the game. Well, a kid like Plavšić, now he gets an opportunity to prove that he can play. He can take advantage of that time. Nice little triple from position. I love the way he does that, Pods. Offensive rebound pulled out by jo Josiah Jordan James. Very active athlete. Shot clock down to eight. Wasting no time as James, though. Tries a three. That won't go. There's Plopchic with an offensive rebound. Bailey able to connect after Plopchic kept the possession alive. Yeah, Bailey gets the deuce, but he's got to go hug Plopšić because he made that happen, man, with that offensive rebound. Bailey's a pretty good shooter, even though he struggles. At times you look at his stats, but everybody says he's a pretty good shooter. Came from Oregon, Dante transfer. Allen in and out for three. I think Allen didn't get a lot of minutes in the last game against Missouri. That doesn't make a lot of Kentucky people happy because they really love seeing him on the floor. He's the one threat to shoot the three. But John Calipari says he's got to play better defense. He's got to defend. He only earned seven minutes. And that loss to Missouri on Tuesday. There's Olivier Saar with a good box out and draws the foul on Eve Pons. 7 footers in the SEC we're looking at one in our game tonight the red shirt sophomore from Serbia and we've got actually two not only Euros Plavšić but of course Olivier Saar the 7 footer from France as well for Kentucky you know, Zars a kid that's been in foul trouble a great deal. The last game, for example, they're right there with a chance with three minutes to go with opportunity to battle Missouri to the end and possibly get a win. He played 12 minutes. He played 12 minutes and fouled out in a game. He's got to be able to stay on the floor, and he's got to be able to stay out of foul trouble, but he still has to be physical. They want him to be much more physical. His physicality has not been what they expected. <laughs> How many times has John Calipari been in that position, Nick, after the game, talking about his team being right on the doorstep of a win and not getting it done inside of the last three or four minutes? Oh, absolutely. He told me six times this year, we're right there to win games and just didn't get it done, didn't close it out, didn't make shots. You got to make shots. You got to have no secret. They're not a good shooting basketball team. Look at their stats. Certainly show that. Uh, sloppy right there. The rhythm right now, Tennessee, is not what they would like. And obviously, as you look at Rick Barnes, he's not happy that these guys are sitting next to him, Fulkerson and Sonny Viscovi. Now, Rick Barnes talked about how sloppy his team was in the second half of their loss to Ole Miss on Tuesday. They were 5 of 20 from the field in the second half and had 11 second half turnovers. And that was. Yeah, really turned Pretty much solely responsible for a very low scoring two point loss. Deion Brooks. Shot fake and finishes with the left hand. Nice little one on one move right there against Paz, who's an elite defensive player. Brooks took him one on one and scored. And now Keon Brooks. Going back and forth with Eve Pons. He draws the foul, and those two now have words. Well, we've got a big Monday lineup for you on ESPN and the app when North Carolina hosts Miami and Chapel Hill at 7 Eastern. So North Carolina coming off a big win against Duke. And how about Oklahoma State coming off of a double overtime win of their own today against Texas. They will take on Kansas. And boy, Dick, is Kansas struggling as well. You talked about lumping Kansas in with Kentucky, with Duke, with Michigan State, some of the real blue blood programs in college basketball that might not be in the NCAA tournament before all is said and done if they keep up their performance to date. Well, John Clay, fine writer down there in Lexington, wrote about the fact, wrote a column about the Champions Classic to start the season. Who does it involve? Kentucky, 
Michigan State, Kansas, and Duke, and all four of them. Somebody said, you got to change that title. Get rid of that champions at the top. <laughs> you don't change it. Not one year, man. Not one year. And I want to message out there to those people on social media going about, oh, Calipari should be fired. Calipari. Come on, get real. Get absolutely real. The guy's one of the best coaches in America. I don't care what this year shows. Bottom line, look at his track record at Mass and at Kentucky. It's off the charts. So get off that crazy feeling, but he is not getting fired. That will not happen. I got a better chance of growing here than him getting fired at Kentucky. Let me ask you a question. Let's say just for the sake of argument, John Calipari got fired tomorrow. Would the day end without him getting another job? I mean, think about how many envelopes would be with an offer on his desk within about an hour if Kentucky was dumb enough to fire John Calipari. And you're right, that's just social media ridiculousness. He's not going anywhere, nor should he. Coming up short, Lance Ware. But if the payment Deion Brooks with an offensive rebound. <laughs> that might do it too as Eve Pons ends up with the rebound. I like Pons. I know he has some shortcomings shooting the ball at times, but I like the way he plays. He plays hard. He's fundamentally sound. He defends. See, they're all getting that triple threat position. They teach that. And a soft bounce for Jaden Springer. Well, Springer's dad was a great player. And Gary was a terrific player down there at Iona. Played for Pat Kennedy, but he was recruited really by... Jimmy Valvano, Tommy Abadamarco was on his staff and now works for Rick Catino and I own it. Rick Martz told me we want to play a lot quicker than we've been playing. And there's an example right there. I'm going to play at a faster pace. Well, the faster pace resulted in a wide open look for Springer. He just couldn't knock it down. Coming up short is Brooks. But he gets his own nice miss. Movement. They work it around at Dante Allen. That won't go. Victor Bailey's got the rebound. And now a couple of players again have to be separated. As EJ Anasicki got tied up in the lane for Tennessee. As he went chest to chest with Lance Ware. Lance Ware's a tough kid. He's a tough kid. A little limited offensively, but he gives you his best. He's physical and he's absolutely tough. Is Knoxville upgrading rough? Has there been an orange invasion in Big Blue Nation country? We'll explain in a moment. There's a major renovation project currently going on at Rupp Arena. And with about a two and a half hour drive from Rupp down to Knoxville, maybe you'll hire a steel company from Knoxville to come up and work on the arena. I think that's what they did. Well, you know what? You might have a Tennessee fan or two on the crew. The guy that worked the crane for Superior Steel out of Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, earlier today left behind a Tennessee flag that currently is flying above Rupp Arena <laughs> as we speak. Oh, wow. Ahead of this yeah. rivalry game tonight. Maybe that's the guy. Who knows? He might have stuck around, gotten a ticket, and gotten inside to watch his Vols in a 14-14 tie early on. And there is a denial at the rim. Jacob Toppin making his first impactful play as he stopped Anasicki. Or check that, Keon Johnson. Austin at the foul line. That's short, gets his own miss. Can't connect, but Saar cleans it up. Yeah, he's all hanging around the basket. He used that seven-foot size. It's an offense rebound. Hey, you know why Fulkerson's going to be really missed here if he doesn't get back on the floor? He had 27 against Kentucky last year. They were down 17 and made a great comeback to win that game. And Fulkerson was the star of stars, man. A star of stars. He, unbelievable. Had a big-time game. Career-high 27. Bank shot for Jacob Toppin with Fulkerson on the bench. Picking up the two early fouls. Keon Johnson swoops to the goal and finishes. Tell why Keon Johnson really looks impressive early in the game. Showed that great quickness right there. Exploded to the goal, beat a guy off the bounce, and nobody was there to rotate, give any kind of help. Evan Askew, he is able to create an and one on the drop. Tell you one thing, I feel a little sorry for this young guy. 
He's a young kid coming into college as a freshman, trying to do his best, and he's got so much criticism by so many, especially against social media. Here he is using the left hand with the drive to the goal. I mean, people are just not patient. You know, Bob, everybody wants instant success out of kids that come in with big high school reputations. He's really struggled over his last five games coming into tonight. Four for his last 27 from the field. 0 for 9 from 3. He has not made a 3 since January 12th against Alabama. But that is an old-fashioned three-point play to give Kentucky a five-point lead. I, I think it's a little psychologically... He's dealing with that, but again, he was a weak kid who reclassified. But you have to understand, he also, as an eighth grader, was held back a year to get a little more maturity. So it really is in the same class that he should be in. Czar for three. Yes! I mean, you see moments of Czar. To me, he's a teaser. You see some moments, and you expect this to come out all the time. And for some reason, it does not. You see some of the skills he possesses. Gascovi picked up his dribble. Needs some help. And Josiah Jordan James bailed him out. Victor Bailey. He connects. But he's a capable shooter now. He's not shown it, though, when you look at the stat sheet. But he's very capable of putting points quickly on the board. You know, early in the year, they were averaging like 70 points a game. When you look at Tennessee, but it has been a struggle for them to score. I mean, as of late. Askew hits a three from the corner, and boy, does that have to feel good for Devin Askew. As I said, that is his first made triple since January 12th against Alabama. Wow. Saw. Happy to see it. That's goaltending. You know, happy to see a kid who's struggling really step up like that, ask you. That's tough to deal with. You know, you play at Kentucky, you really watch every little thing is analyzed, evaluated. Watch the little screen right here by Zar. Defense steps away, and now he's going to step back, catch the ball right here, step back, and he's going to shoot the jumper. And man, he could do that. See that nice stroke? Kentucky only averages 5.2 made threes per game, 318th in the country. They've already made two triples early, and there's a missed triple, but Isaiah Jackson on the follow. Well, that's why he's rated so high by so many people. His athleticism is off the charts, and we talk about it. You saw an example of it down there, and he's also very aggressive and physical. What he lacks is his ability skill-wise or offensively. Look at this behind the arc. Look at Kentucky. You know the funny part about it? You know, Bob, really rare? They made nine threes for 20 against Missouri and still lost that game. That was one of their better games shooting the three. In and out for Mintz. Now, you can see based on those numbers, anything that Kentucky gets from behind the arc is almost gravy. Deion Johnson does it again. Too many guys getting right down the lane without being stopped at all. Terrific pace to this game so far, though. End-to-end -end action. Both teams are attacking the basket, and Johnson tries to do it again and draws the foul, although B.J. Boston thought he was in a legal position. Well, Rick Warren said he wanted to play a fast game. He wanted a little tempo. He said, we want to run, baby, run. Run, baby, run. The fouls taking it to the goal. Tennessee and Kentucky, a higher scoring game than we expected. Bob Shoes and Dick Vitale. Tennessee starts off the season 10 and 1, but Dick, they've lost three of their last five. And of course, Kentucky, they showed some flashes in the middle of what has been a miserable 5 and 11 start to this year. They had a three game winning streak that was snapped, and they have now lost five of their last six. Throw in a cancellation in the Big 12 SEC Challenge against Texas. And just when you thought maybe after a really slow start, Kentucky was turning the corner, 3-1 to begin the SEC schedule. They are now 4-5 and five in the league. You know, right here, you think about this, when you look at the score and the pace of the game, right now, when you look at the fouls, they've scored in the 50s four times this year. I mean, their four losses, they average 56.5. And right now, they're scoring at a really pretty good rate if they can continue this. But you know what? They started the game early and scored big in the first 10 minutes against Ole Miss. And the second half, they went like in a drought. <laughs> Elbow, 
mentioned Missouri a little bit earlier. What a big win today, beating Alabama. I'll tell you what, yes. the Quanzo Martin, he's going to be coach of the year in a conference. He's doing a great job with that Missouri team. Foul called on Keon Johnson, but he thought he had stripped it away cleanly from Jacob Toppin. As we take a look at the SEC standings, Alabama still in charge of this league at 10 and 1. It certainly looks like they are going to be the SEC regular season champions, but you've got a Tennessee team that's ranked 11th in the AP poll, and yet Dick, they're right in the middle of the pack. They need this win just to stay with that very crowded field of six win teams behind Alabama. Yeah, it looks like Alabama. I mean, you talk about uh, certainly Coach Oates is going to be the right favorite to be the coach of the year. I'm talking about Quanzo coming on, unless there's a real, real, real failure by Alabama to survive and to stay up on top. I think they will stay on top. I think they got a chance to go and look at their schedule coming up. They got a chance to go on a real run. Lance Ware with a couple of offensive rebounds to keep this possession alive. What a whistle away from the ball. That's what Weir does well. He really goes after the ball, really aggressive. He had Arkansas, Kentucky on Tuesday. I mean, Kentucky's on TV a little bit. You can say what you want, man. They're a hot <laughs> item on TV. So is the so is so is that team called Duke. And How so about the second half of our Super Carolina. Tuesday doubleheader? Well, you must be you doing do this that one game, too? right? <laughs> I knew that. West Virginia, Texas Tech should be a very good <laughs> game. West Virginia had the good win today over Kansas. Eve Pons kicks one out, and Jaden Springer knocks one down. Springer really impresses a lot of people. The last game he had a bad game. It was one for seven against Ole Miss. A block at the rim. Tennessee has made seven consecutive field goals, trying to keep a hot streak alive as they have oh, retaken nice the lead. A shot fake by Springer. He kicks one out to James. That's off the mark. And the rebound is pulled down by Jacob Toppin. One thing about Toppin, he's like Weir, man. They come after you. They play hard, very aggressive. I think Toppin's going to become a very good player in a Kentucky uniform. Weir spins and pins. And the arrow will give the basketball to Tennessee. Watch this right here now. You're going to see here. Catch the ball. Look at that shot fake. Do three things when you square it to the body. You can go to the basket. You can pass it. You can drive and shoot it. But they do a great job at Tennessee teaching. Catch the ball and get in triple threat position. Use a little jab step, a little shoulder fake. A little confusion here. I'm not sure if Tennessee realized the basketball belonged to them, but they had the arrow with six minutes to go in the first half of what has been a back and forth affair. At one point, Kentucky had a seven point lead when it was 29 22. This run for Tennessee has given them a two point lead as they are now shooting 54% from the field. But an answer at the other end, Davion Mitz. Well, Mitz credit for his buddy Askew. Askew did a terrific job running that ball up the court and having a vision to know where his teammate was on the floor. And found him and he delivered from a Creighton player. The long rebound. Check that. It was Dante Allen. And then back the other way comes Askew. Puts it down to the post to Saw. He likes a little baseline jump shot here. Right over the top of Eve Pons, but it comes up short. He missed two like that to win games against Notre Dame and against Louisville. They both were right there to go down. You talk about losing tough games. Springer. Oh, wrap around pass off the shins of Anasiki. You know, Anasiki was right there for the layup. The pass was just a little bit too strong, but the right idea was there by Springer. See, I look at Springer and I look at Johnson. These kids, they may get drafted, you know, in the first round in the NBA. And then where do they go, Bob? They get some dollars, but maybe you get your own one contract. You don't get a second because you go down there to the G League. And who knows what's going to happen? Because they're not ready to play in the NBA. That's for darn sure. But they get drafted on potential. Throws it down. Right, right now we've got Jaden Springer, at least on our mock draft at ESPN. Jaden Springer as a first-round pick. Keon Johnson 
I believe the last mock draft for ESPN that I saw had him getting taken number seven overall. You could, you're going to be the number wow. seven pick in the NBA draft. It's impossible to stay in college, I would think. Yeah, no doubt about it. Financially, it's tough for a kid to do that. But I just think sometimes these kids, look, they want that instant gratification and don't realize maybe staying in school is the best thing for them. Springer tries to go end to end. That's an offensive foul. Mintz took the charge. He had position, and Jaden Springer turns it over. Kentucky with a three-point lead under four minutes to go in the first half. Make those threes, Askew's man. first Jason. triple since early January. And a way to manufacture points. Back to Rupp, Bob and Dick. That's a... He's exactly right Kevin's there with that three. Three. That comes up short from the wing for Dante Allen. Tell you one thing, when I think about Kentucky, you saw them right there. My mind tells me when you think about the great point guards, John Wall. You think about Brandon Knight. You think about Marcus Teague. You think about Mr. Harrison, Tyler Eulis, the Aaron Fox. I might go on and on. What about the kid, Yilkis Alexander, now doing it in a pros really well. And then Hankins, they had Hankins last year. They've had some really good point guards. And that's lacking on his team this year. On his charge, no doubt about it. Lower the shoulder. Right there, he's got his own board that step. In. James had the finish at one end. It is an offensive foul on Olivier Saar at the other. You know, you mentioned James, Bob. His dad played with Magic Johnson at Michigan State, was the captain one year in 80 81. Played for Judd Heatco. Now, right here. See, right now he's going to turn. As soon as that shoulder comes in, I mean, that's what a man. So what he had to do there is maybe use the drop step and go to the baseline and get that foot where you get an angle on him and square your body on that baseline. Clinic 101 by Yubi Brown. Oh, on nice fake with a nice shot fake oh. and a finish. Yeah, Yubi, you would like that, Yubi. I know Yubi would love that. Five-star fame. And by the way, five-star camp, big to John Calipari and big to Rick Barnes. Springer comes up short. Sars got the rebound and just about traveled as he was able to get the ball off to Davion Mintz before he dragged his pivot foot. Off the curl, wide open, but off the mark for Topper. I like the way you call that off the curl, man. You got analytical Thanks. ability right there, Mr. Wishusa. Well, I've, you know, tried to get better at this over the years. How am I doing? <laughs> you're doing a good job, buddy. Yeah, you're, you're not bad yourself. Job. You might have uh, a future in this if you keep on polishing your craft. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make you my PR agent. Shot uh, look at that clock down to five. E. Pons See, is going to put one position. up over Saar. That's no good. And now a foul will be called. It looks like on Keon Johnson. You know, both these clubs are capable of getting really, really cold. Tonight, the SEC Now team wraps up a full day of hoops with all the highlights, breakdowns, and interviews with players and coaches. 10 Eastern, 9 Central, over on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Keon Johnson picking up his second foul. So the foul trouble continues to mount. Now, I guess, Dick, you'd have to give Tennessee some credit for getting through the bulk of the first half without John Fulkerson and Santiago Vescovi. They both picked up their second foul before we even hit the under-16 timeout. They've been on the bench almost the entire first half, and yet Tennessee is right in this game with Kentucky. But now Keon Johnson picks up his second as well. Well, down five right now. The bottom line is they want to be able to close this out with a few points. Now we're that gap. You don't want Kentucky to whiten it. Hey, let me tell you this. Get some news here. For all the Tennessee fans, they are going to absolutely love, love Paul B. and Cardi, our fine guru who does the rating of high school players, sent me a text a little while ago. He said, Kennedy Chandler will be the third highest ranked recruit ever to pick Tennessee. 
since they've been doing it. And he is, yes, really a talent. This guy is a big time point guard. He's dynamite. Yesterday he was brilliant in the game. Played really well as he did a phenomenal job for his school, Sunrise Christian, as they went into overtime to beat the number one team in the country, Mount Vernon Academy from out of Orlando. That jumper is pure for Keaton Brooks. What a nice first half Kentucky's had. You know, as they said in the studio, not turning the ball over, making open shots, putting 41 already on the board. They only give up 58.9. This kid side with Kentucky, Kentucky. They've got an impact guard coming in as well, and Nolan Hickman. When do they when do they not have some impact players? Devin Askew off to a good start. He's got eight points, Dick, on three for three from the field. Yeah, I'm really happy for the kid because I read a lot of things on social media, and he's been really crucified by so many. And I'll tell you this, you see the young kid hanging in there and just battling and battling and battling, and he's done a solid job here tonight. Patience, my friends, patience. You watch a kid like that becomes a good player eventually. So you mentioned how young he is. He just turned 18 over the summer. He was the number one point guard in the class of 21, reclassified to 2020 to get to Kentucky a year early, but did spend a prep year back prior to high school. But I guess this kind of gets him back on what should be his normal timeline, but it, it has to be hard to be a freshman at Kentucky, right? It's just different being a freshman at Kentucky than it might be being a freshman at any other program in America. I say amen to that. The pressure here, and also on the coaches. There's only a few coaches that can handle that kind of pressure. The scrutiny is unbelievable in every game. You know, Calipari was able, was able to handle it. Patino certainly was able to handle it. Not many can. Now the reward is you're playing for a coach that prepares you for the NBA as much as any coach possibly could. You're playing, playing in front of 22,000 of the most passionate college basketball fans that there are. And I guess you know what you're signing up for. It's not like a kid doesn't know what he's getting into when he comes to Kentucky. As Eve Pons commits his second foul, he bowls over Olivier Saar. Having said that, though, there you're right. There still is such a constant white hot spotlight on everything that man does and all of these freshmen that he brings in. Well, John gets paid kind of well for that spotlight. I mean, nine mil a <laughs> year is not does. bad. You can handle that at nine mil a year. And he deserves every bit of it, because I'm telling you, what he brings into that university is incredible. It's like a CEO of a company. You know, the situation is pressure, pressure, pressure. But you know what? They're going to get good players. There's no doubt about it. But not every kid. Every kid is made to wear that Kentucky uniform. And you're right, Bob, the scrutiny is unbelievable. And these guys are able to handle it. John Wall, oh, just a phenomenal talent. So happy he's back playing again. I mean, this guy was pretty good too, wasn't he? It's not bad, Anthony Davis. Are you kidding me? Carl Anthony Towns, I think he's had a few players there wearing that Kentucky uniform. Those kids, as freshmen, are a heck of a lot different than those rated very highly this year. They're generation players, man. Anthony Davis, Carl Anthony Towns, so, so unique and so special. John has such a passion. You made a great point, though, about the crowd, about the big, big crowds that they get. That is one thing I really believe the pandemic has hurt the big schools. The game before us, all right? Dude, you'd have a packed place. Cameron Crazy's going unbelievable. That's worth points. That's worth points. Kentucky with a packed house, passionate fans, the most passionate in college basketball. If that crowd is there, the adrenaline they give the team. Rock Chalk Jaywalk, you can say it about Kansas. You can say it about the end zone down there with Michigan State. Those schools miss that. Do they still have a home court advantage? Of course. The fact you shoot in the same building, the fact you don't sleep in the same bed, the fact that you're not traveling, those are advantages. But not like if you had a crowd that is there going wild. I had to get that off my chest, Bob. I had to get it off my chest. I'm sorry. No, you're right. There's no question. I've always heard that any of these places, the visiting team pretty much has to know they have to be about 10 points better than the home team because the crowd and its impact on the game is probably worth about 10 points. Well, now it's probably worth three just the fact you're home, but you're right. right. That's a big difference. Plus, the spark it gives a team when those fans get up there, the adrenaline, you just want to do well. 
I mean, you wear a Kentucky uniform. Those kids in Lexington, they are as, almost as popular as the Secretariats and Seattle Sloughs and all. But Secretariats, Seattle Slough, and them, they're not, they're, you know, not signing autographs. They're taking pictures. A turnover just before halftime. As Askew, that will not count if it goes. Still, this is the most first half points allowed by Tennessee this season. A terrific first half for Kentucky. They've got an eight point lead. It's time for the halftime report with Sean Farnham. Let's head back to the studio and Kevin Connors. Kevin? Welcome back to the ESPN Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. This, of course, is the SEC on ESPN. Just about set for the start of the second half at Rupp Arena. It was a run-based first half, as at one point, Kentucky had a seven-point lead. A run by Tennessee gave them the lead. Then it was a run to end the first half for Tennessee, but it's an eight-point lead, Dick Vitale, in large part because Kentucky's doing a lot of the little things well. Well, really great move right there for that lamp who hit him. Right now, look at this. Two guys double a the ball. They find the open man right there. Somebody's got to be open, right? You don't have to go to Harvard to figure that out. We'll go to Princeton or go to Yale. Be an Ivy League guy wide open. You just got to make the shot. And he does. All right. Great thinking right there. Take a look right here. They're going to see them. Little screen's going to come up. Watch this play here. Kentucky really executed exceptionally well. Watch this here. The great execution. They'll bring the ball, reverse it back out, wide open. Zark is a triple threat position. Shows he has range as a seven footer and makes that open shot. That's Dick Vitale on Bob Schusen. How about adjustments in the second half for Tennessee after they gave up more points in the first half to Kentucky than they've given up in any half this season? Well, they got to get Pons and Fulkerson go. Pons had two points. Fulkerson played only three minutes, was on the pond. I will tell you this. Kentucky was up 17 last year in the second half against Tennessee. And Tennessee won the game because Fulkerson went wild. Now that he's stroking the ball tonight. Great open look for Zahar and he delivers. He's in double figures. Olivier Saar for the eighth time this season. John Calipari nearly unbeatable when winning by, by leading by double digits at any point during a game. Keon Brooks one on one over E. Pons does not get the roll and Fulkerson clears. You know, Brooks had a real strong first half, made some big shots, scored on the inside. They got to get Fulkerson going. He's got to get involved in the game. They can't just be a guy sitting on a pine and standing around. He's got to play right here. Oh, you got to make that shot. You got to make that shot. He missed the bunny. Pull up for Davion Mintz. That's a brick. You're kind. That was a boulder. <laughs> Vescovi is fouled by Mintz up top. <laughs> Tell you one thing, Tennessee's the defense was not suffocating that first half. With some of the trends. Kentucky okay, closing the, the first half on a 12-2 run to open up an eight-point halftime lead, and that's where it stands now. You know, Bob, one of the big situations, Kentucky getting in the free throw line and going 13 for 15. That's a major advantage. Keon Johnson draws the foul, so he will shoot two. That foul on Davion Mintz now his third. So that's the first player for either team to pick up their third personal foul. See if John Calipari pulls Mintz from the game. You talk about eat, sleep, and drink the game. This guy, 24-7, that's all he does. But I think for Kentucky, it's real a thrill for them to see Olivier Zahn finally really become a factor. He's with the rebound right now. He had 11 double-doubles last season in the ACC. as a third-team all-ACC selection for Wake Forest. And here he is again through a triple team. Stripped away by Vescovi. Here comes Jaden Springer the other way. He glides in for two. That's a big time move right there by Springer. Showing that athleticism. Going the length of the court. Showing Sorry, some athleticism and laying one in is Keon Brooks. 
Yeah, Keon does that well, drives to the goal, very strong. Getting him back is a big plus for Kentucky, no question. He's, a he's now been player. in double figures, six of the eight games that he's played since coming back off of the calf injury that cost him the first nine games of the season. And now Olivier Saar makes his presence felt on the defensive end. You know, Saar has really become a factor here tonight, defensively and offensively. He's going to rotate over. There he is. Czar right there, right on the play. Ian Fulkerson matched up right now. Olivier on Mr. Fulkerson. Fulkerson's got to get active. He's got to stand. He can't move. He's got to move. Player's got to want the ball. Hans miss. And fumbling it out of bounds at the other end now is Keon Brooks. So Kentucky very clean in the first half with only one turnover. They've now turned it over three times here in the second half. That was a brilliant first half. I mean, they're going to put that one away. Sean talked about it at halftime. They played so well, didn't turn the ball over, got good shots. He's got another good recruiting class called the Paul B. and Cardi coming in next year. Many of these guys should be coming back. I can't see these guys going to the pros. I mean, come on. Sar just picked up his second. Yeah, you're right. I mean, off of a 5-11 and 11 season, it's hard to think that there's going to be the same demand you normally would have for Kentucky players, at least this group in the NBA. But NBA teams nowadays, Dick, they draft the measurables and the potential and the development as much as they draft collegiate accomplishments. Absolutely. It's all potential, potential, potential. You know what happens with potential? He gets coaches fired, and then a new guy steps in. <laughs> potential, potential, potential. Oh. I want Let's guys go be on the drive. That was too strong. Here comes Devin Askew. He'll cross over. Oh, oh, nice. Trailer. Fire the throw down. Keon Brooks hangs from the rim off the feet you know, from Askew. You know, Keon Brooks ran the court really well. But what a brilliant play right there by Askew. He created that opportunity in transition. Good two-man basketball. This is the best I've seen Kentucky play this year. Really, playing strong against a team that's supposed to be suffocating defensively. I mean, really. They give up 58 points a game. Look at Askew right now. There's the little potential he possesses. And Keon Brooks with the flush, with the finish. Down the lane, up and up away. There he is, little Skywalker time, little excitement. Just like the Bucks tomorrow when they beat those Chiefs, who you said it's impossible, <laughs> Mr. Richards. You told me it was impossible was against the Saints. You told me it was impossible, oh, no. me it was impossible no. against the Packers. I'm going to say it again, because you're going to go 0 for 3. And I'm going to go 3 for 3. It's a little strong to say I said it was impossible because I picked the Saints and the Packers. Well, you said you no got chance. Tom Brady at quarterback. It's never impossible. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to get the tape. Like Warner Wolf used to yeah. say, get the tape. I heard on the tape, no chance was the word. Yeah, that, no by chance. By the way, tomorrow, the Bucks have no chance. Absolutely. I know no you chance. Said that <laughs> oh, I feel good now. I feel really good. We got <laughs> you look Ray very Chan. relaxed there, leaning back I, in front I, of all your awards. I'm very there you relaxed, go. That's baby. Right. Uh, oh, perfect. yeah. Oh, yeah. Kimberly, here we go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I feel very relaxed. Boston with a step back, but Sar set a moving screen. Yeah, see, that's a silly foul for him. Now he's got three. Now he's going to spoil a great performance because he's got to go to the bench. That's been a problem with Zarr. Going to the bench. Zarr has been really a problem. has been really a problem in terms of foul trouble. He fouled out, scoring nine points against Missouri on Tuesday. He's fouled out three times and had a handful of other games where he's had at least four fouls. So you're right, that oh, foul nice. trouble has been something that Calipari has had to man, uh, manage all year with Olivier Saar. Nice shot fake again by Jaden Springer, and he will go to the line to shoot two more. Yeah, Springer's really very aggressive tonight. You know, he mentioned uh, Zar has been that way in terms of when he was at Wake Forest as well.
Showed some real toughness in the first half today. It was very aggressive, Olivier. Springer now, has, has the... Springer now has 12. And he's really efficient. You talk about Olivier Saar being really efficient. Jaden Springer in double figures for the ninth game this season. Averages 9.6 points per game on only 6.9 field goal attempts per game. And you're scoring nearly double figures, not even shooting the ball seven times a game. I would think Rick Barnes would say to him, shoot the ball more. Yeah, he should definitely shoot, but he shot more poorly though the last game. One for seven. But this kid's showing his ability right here in this game. Kentucky's got a lot of movement offensively. They get player movement, ball movement. Look at that. Good ball movement. And Lance Ware is fouled. He's such an aggressive player where very physical. He's got to work next year on his offensive moves. It's a hey, seven-point hey, lead. Hey. <laughs> How old are you, Dick Vitale? I guess we're going to talk about that when we come back, try and make you as uncomfortable as possible. Well, Turns out it wasn't that a dream. Out? Who is that wacko? <laughs> Who is that wacko? Oh, man. Bucks, 38 to 34 over the Chiefs. And I will be there celebrating. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a really interesting chess match to watch. I think we're just talking about it off the air a moment ago, how Todd Bowles as a defensive coordinator has always been Mr. Blitz. He blitzes at the highest percentage normally of a defensive play caller going back to his days when he was the DC in Arizona for uh, Bruce Arians. and. I don't know, Dick. I mean, to me, if you look at all those injuries on the offensive line for Kansas City, you shouldn't have to blitz tomorrow. And Patrick Mahomes is so good against the blitz. That's a really interesting strategic chess game. Do you send numbers after Patrick Mahomes, or do you just tell that defensive line, hey, you're four against their five, we're better, and it's on you guys to go after Mahomes yourself? Well, you sound like me now. You're talking about football instead of basketball. We just had Isaiah Jackson <laughs> with a reverse layup with the left hand for a deuce. You weren't talking I mean, about football. Try. You were just chanting, let's go Bucks." <laughs> they got that video from ESPN.com. I want to say this, though. I have a fellow tonight, John Moses. He and his son Beckham came to my house. We had dinner. We talked. Had a lot of stories. But Mr. Moses gave thousands and thousands of dollars to the V Foundation for kids battling cancer to get two tickets that we got them for the Super Bowl and to have a time dinner at my house today, which he did, and we got them at a nice resort. John Moses, we love you, buddy. We appreciate it. Have a great time tomorrow. I know you're rooting for your Chiefs because he's from St. Louis, but that's the only thing that's not going to be happy for you. Bitebytown.com. <laughs> you can get the books. And you can also learn about the gala. There's a big triple for Tennessee. Victor Bailey makes it a four-point game. With five and a half gone by here in the second half. Only the third made three and 16 tries for the Vols. Tell you one thing, they were down 17 last year against Kentucky and came back. Nice try. Another 17 now for Keon Brooks. Yeah, he's really attacking the rim well. Good first step. Explosive to the basket. He's a different player from last year. He really is. He didn't get a whole lot of minutes last year. He came out strong in a game against Florida when they came back and won that game. He should be really good next year. Fulkerson's been really quiet, really quiet. Uh, Fulkerson with the early foul trouble picked up two fouls in the first two and a half minutes of the game. So sat the entirety of the rest of the first half. So he has yet to score. And he had 11 points a game as a player that if Tennessee is at least going to stay in games or win them, they're going to have to get some offensive production out of John Fulkerson. And some of his fans right now are saying, why are they going to show that graph? And he only played three minutes in the first half, but he's got to get going. He had 27 against him, a career high last year against Kentucky. Fade away is short for Jaden Springer. Shot selection is so big with young players. Learning what a good shot is. We're talking about that off. Oh, what about the charge there? Yeah, look at those Looking back to that year. last meeting with Kentucky and how much Fulkerson dominated that matchup. And he just picked up his fourth 
personal foul. Wow, I thought he got charged. I thought it was a charge. Did you not, Bob? It was hard to see the official behind the backboard and what the call was, to be honest with you, but I, I agree. My first instinct was that he was in pretty good Ooh. position there. I thought he beat him to the spot. I thought he beat him so to the Fulkerson spot. So Fulkerson right back to the bench in foul trouble. And again, it looks like Tennessee is going to have to play the majority of their second half without John Fulkerson. Rhythm, they just he tries to save it, stepped on the end block. It's been a tough night for John Fulkerson. He didn't expect to be an assistant coach, and that's what he really basically is. He's an assistant coach tonight, sitting on that pine. Rick Barnes said, I need you on the floor. I need you on the floor, big guy. And you know who else needs him on the floor is Eve Pons, because Pons draws a lot more attention if Fulkerson's out, and Pons only has two points on one for six shooting. They played so well together as a tandem against Kansas. The execution, they were so efficient. A little high-low action they had. Devin Askew to his left comes up short. Offensive rebound and a stick back. 19 for Keon Brooks. What a game he is having. That was just an aggressive play. The desire to want the ball. And he went and he got that basketball and converted. His I first double-double in the eight games that he has played. And now Tennessee finally gets a friendly bounce. Bailey able to knock one down. Yeah, Bailey put up some points, and that's his strength. Stay with the hot hand. Why not? Unconscious. Keon Brooks, he's got 21. That was a good one-on-one -on -one move, though. He took the ball right in the lane with the left hand. Likes going to that left and squares his body with the right hand and delivered to Jay. Keon Brooks having a great night. Askew with the deflection, took it away from Vescovi. Oh, nice pass. Off the head. Throws nice it pass. down is Boston. I tell my boss to get the call called by Tennessee. One diaper dandy to another diaper dandy. Ask you to Boston. They came in with a big time reputation. This is what they were expecting out of these guys. This is what they wanted to see throughout the entire year. Where has it been? Where has it been? Here it is. Look at work in the glass. What an offensive rebound by Brooks. Oh, baby. This is Kentucky basketball. Oh, Big Blue Nation loves this. They love it. Look at the jam. Yes, sir. Oh, way. Let's hear from John Fulkerson in our Wendy's Wooden Watch tonight. I think a Wooden Award candidate brings, first of all, leadership to their team. I think this is probably the most important and greatest attribute. And then, other than that, their willingness to bring the team together, to put the team before themselves, and to make sure that, that they are getting everyone's best every time out. John Fulkerson was second team All-SEC last season. And as a leader on this year's Tennessee team was put on the midseason top 25 for the Wooden Award. But all he has been put on tonight, Dick Vitale, is the bench. Two fouls in the first three minutes of the game. He has picked up a couple of more fouls early here in the second half. And so with nearly 12 minutes still to go in a game where his team trails by 10, the Wooden Award candidate for the Vols is on the bench with four. Yeah, he's really, really struggled tonight to get himself on the floor. I thought he got a raw deal there on the fourth foul. I, I thought it was definitely a charge. But again, that's, you know, I don't make the call, they do. Hey, I want to give a little shout out here to a kid coming up in the UCLA game, coming up with UCLA and Southern Cal. Watch Evan Mobley, 6'10". Last three games, 62 points, 32 rebounds. He is legit, big time. People there, I mean, Bill will tell you, he is absolutely one really funny guy. I mean, the big redhead. I'll tell you one thing, though, talking about a big player, I mentioned Mobley. He's been dynamite. That diaper dandy for Andy Enfield has been unreal. You're looking at 13-3 and and 14-3, and these teams. Mick Cronin lost a key player in Chris Smith, but he hasn't missed the beat. And I'll tell you one thing, he's bringing back discipline, shot selection, defense, and a toughness. That'll be a good basketball game. People, remember the name, Evan Mobley, 6'10". He's had 62 points and 32 rebounds in his last three games. 
I want to give another quick shout out, Bob, to two mid majors. Two mid majors. Belmont is 20 and one right now. They got 20 wins today. They're 20th, and they're going to be a little tough team for teams to deal with in the tournament. And also Drake won again today, beating Valparaiso. They're 18 and 0. The Bulldogs. Foul called on Josiah Jordan James, trying to stay with Keon Brooks. No one has been able to stop Keon Brooks for Tennessee tonight. He's got 21 points and 10 rebounds. His first double-double this season after missing the first nine games of the year with a calf injury. So John Calipari very happy to see number 12 back out there for Kentucky. Well, he's a good leader for the young kids out there. They're going to follow his way. I mean, this Kentucky team, if you have an SEC tournament, very capable of winning that tournament. I mean, they really are very capable of winning that tournament. Sounds crazy, but they can do it. Askew can't hit the three. By the way, Keon Johnson was called for that last foul, not James. And that's Keon Johnson's third. So now Kentucky that with line. some foul trouble as Boston, Mintz, and Saar all have three. And big foul trouble has been the story throughout for Tennessee. Fulkerson picked up two early fouls. He's on the bench with four, and now Keon Johnson has three. You know, Fulkerson and Pons, they're two stalwarts, the two seniors you expect to produce. What are they, like one for eight, two points between them? Turn around in the lane. Is there for Keon Johnson. I like Keon Johnson. He and Springer, they really got one heck of a future. Those two young kids are trying to carry the load with the seniors really not producing today. Brooks to his left, and that time an air ball. Springer will drive it, and he will draw the foul. Nice drive by Springer right there. Now he's got to convert the free throw line. He missed some big one-on-ones late in the game against Ole Miss. Kentucky already hey, over John's. the limit. Hey, Bob, I know you're from New York. We're going to give St. John's a little shout-out. Mike Anderson's club beat Villanova. Today they beat Providence. They've been on a roll lately. If yeah, they're, they're going to win this game, Tennessee, well. If they're going to win this game, Tennessee, Fulkerson is going to become a factor late in the last five, six minutes. If he is not, they cannot win it. They need his size inside to produce. I mean, he's well rested now, and he comes off that bench. He has to produce. All right, you're Rick Barnes. How long do you wait? Do you have a clock time in mind, a score in mind? When do you bring him back? Yeah, I think square plays a part of that, Bob. It's a great question. I, every coach is different. Me, I would probably go if I can't hang on close to the last five, six minutes. Depending on how close you are, if Kentucky opens up a gap, you can't wait. Saar from the elbow. In and out. Saar really shoots Chance that for shot. Tennessee to really cut this well. down to two, maybe one. The lob inside nice to Eve Ponds. Shot fake. And he's able to finish. And we've got a two point game. But he did really well right there, the patience. Patience and the poise led to points, the three Ps. He was patient, he was poised, and he put points on the board. You like that, Robert? Robert was shooting the points, the poise, unbelievable patience, the three Ps. That should have been a foul right I heard two poise and a patience. I guess that's three Ps, and it's an 8-0 run for Tennessee. That forced John Calipari to call a timeout. As E. Pons was looking for an end one. Sometimes We've got a big Monday team. lineup coming up <laughs> on ESPN and the app. North Carolina off their win against Duke at Cameron will host Miami and Chapel Hill at 7 Eastern. And then we've got a matchup in the Big 12 with Oklahoma State taking on a very struggling Kansas Jayhawks team right now. Oklahoma State able to beat number six Texas at home today in double overtime. So you know, some Bob, momentum you know, for the heels and the pokes going into a big Monday. You know my feelings about Oklahoma State. I think those kids belong in the NCAA tournament. 
They've had nothing to do with the violations that took place there. They penalized the right people. They penalized the assistant coach who was charged with taking money illegally, etc., from an agent or whatever. Bottom line is they penalized him. They penalized the school a little. But why penalize the team? I don't understand it. They're appealing it. And I hope and pray they win that appeal and are eligible to go in a tournament. Kate Cunningham and those kids deserve to be in a tournament. It looks like the timing is going to play in the favor of Oklahoma State as Devin Askew shuffled his feet and he turns it over. We were talking a couple of weeks ago to Mike Boynton and he was saying that if they got to this point in the schedule and they hadn't had the hearing yet, the appeal hadn't been heard yet, that they just feel like it's so close to tournament time that it probably wouldn't be adjudicated before the NCAA tournament and the calendar would just play in their favor and they would probably make it. See, Kentucky makes turnovers at the crucial times. That's been a story this year, losing all those close games. Right now, they've gotten away from that efficiency that they had in that first half and early in the second half. Oh, nice fake. The shot fake. Allows the flyby. Can't knock it down as Kentucky has been stuck on 58 since we've had about 12 minutes to go. So about three minutes without scoring, and Pons hits a turnaround fadeaway to tie it at 58. Well, Z Ponce has stepped up. The veteran has stepped up here late in the game. Now he's going to get help when his buddy comes in. Focus in the two of them together. Keon Brooks fouled on the floor by Josiah Jordan James. You know, playing people close only counts what? Close counts in horseshoes. Does it count in basketball? And Kentucky's played a lot of people close. It's time they got to start finishing some deals off. Ponce right there with a nice play. Was very fluid in that move on the inside. Look at this, he and, he and Czar right there against each other. Look at them. They know each other, played on a French national team, played against each other in high school in France. And Zarp, now Olivier really, Saar sets the moving screen. He's done that twice today. This is fourth foul. He's had a history on of Zarp. sitting on the bench. Yep. So he and Fulkerson are now both on their respective benches with four. He's moving. You can't do that. Make contact like that. You can't make contact. He called it on <coughs> the screen. I got my buddy who used to live in Lakewood Ranch, <coughs> now working in the executive office there with the SEC, former outstanding ref in the NBA, Bob Delaney. He helps big time. He's got so much information. A oh, nice fake right there. Escobi able to get one down deep. Great position for Keon Johnson. And Tennessee on a 12-0 run. Now 19 for Keon Johnson. They've got the lead back. The first since they led 32-30 back in the first half. This is going to be deja vu of last year in Lexington. 17-point lead in the second half. Kentucky lost it. Fulkerson was the reason. And right now, Springer and guys like Johnson really stepping up. And Pons are a nice play right there. Tough shot made by Devin Askew. He's a nice solid put, game here. That puts him in double figures. The flop not bought by the officials, but then Jaden Springer pulled the string and came up short on the eight footer. Mintz to the free throw line. Down the lane, fouled as Keon Brooks, and he will go to the line to try and put Kentucky back on top when we come back. Well, normally, this Tennessee team only allows about 58 points per game. They've already allowed 60. And Dick, maybe if down the stretch, E. Pons is a factor, Tennessee might be in good shape. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy, the official sponsor of Getting Stuff Done. Bob Lashews and Dick Vitale. A Saturday night matchup deadlock between Tennessee and Kentucky. And down the stretch here, Dick, you wonder if Kentucky can finally get the job done, hold on in the last four minutes, which has been the bugaboo for John Calipari's team this season, end of late. What would a win like this realistically do for their season? 
Well, you know, the bottom line is you got to build on that. Talk about for the season. I mean, I get tired reading some of the players talking about, well, we could go on a run and we could get a March Madness yet. There's still time. No, time is running out, basically. Chance for a, a getting in as an at-large berth, I told you, is like zilch. they got to worry about the current game. Should I even talk the word March Madness? Just win, win, and win. And then get ready for the SEC tournament. Because there's no way in the world at 5-11 and 11, I could see them possibly making it. And I, I think what really hurt them, too, not playing Texas. If they had won a game playing against Texas, that would have been a big boost for them. Jay Billis had said that at the time, and I couldn't agree more with Jay. I said that at the time. That game loss was a big loss when it was canceled. And Texas might have been there to be had as well as they're struggling of late. As B.J. Boston answers the dunk from Keon Johnson, and Kentucky's got the lead back. Well, B.J. shot that really well. Squared his body exceptionally well. Didn't shoot it off balance. Now this is a game you're Kentucky, you've been in command, you've got to close it out. You're at home. Springer muscles his way to the goal. What a nice move by Springer. That type of dandy's got ability. There's no doubt about it. Boy, his dad, Gary, he's got to be proud because he was one heck of a player at Iona. Played for Pat Kennedy. The curl. That time it's not there for Boston. That was a bad shot right there. Bad shot. Right down the lane, challenged at the rim. Davion Mintz is able to stop Keon Johnson. Yeah, great move right there by Mintz on the defensive end. Great timing. Veteran player, look at this here. Looks like he's going to get a layup. Mintz says, no, 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 baby. Don't bring it in the lane. Come on, I'm a veteran. Get it out of here, Diaper Dandy. Get it out of here. Big defensive play for Davion Mintz, the grad transfer from Creighton, who has been a very consistent player this year. For John Calipari, now across the lane. And a chance at the free throw line coming for Keon Johnson to break the tie. Well, he got in strong there on the baseline. Watch Springer, a little one-on-one, -on -one, gets to the baseline, squares his body. Oh, yeah, square that body to the baseline, young guys. When you go to that lane, get that drop stud over the kid's foot, and boom, right to the basket. He's come back nice with a strong game today. Had a real poor game against Ole Miss. He got himself a nice, solid performance here. Stock goes up when you have games like this. Rick Barnes was telling me yesterday on the NFL, he was very upset with the fact that we post, we pick up focus in, I told you six minutes, did I tell you yep. that? Did I tell you six minutes, Robert? You must have coached. Uh, a little bit. Coach on TV, <laughs> I got a better record than Krzyzewski. I haven't lost a game in 42 years. Over a thousand wins, baby. Because when I leave, the game is over, I get a W. <laughs> Ask you lost it. A chance for Tennessee to extend their lead with the left hand. Jaden Springer spins it home. Out there, Springer having a great, great game. And there's the turnover again. This has been Kentucky's problem. Late in games with leads. Look at this. Another one. Another turnover. And not an apple turnover either. Oh, Deion man. Johnson. He goes to the free throw line as Olivier Saar may have just fouled out. So not only a turnover and a takeaway by Johnson at one end, but he attacked Saar, and that might be it. Or well, check that He's Jacob Toppin. Real well. See what he Pardon me, body? Jacob Toppin with the, the foul. Ball. He protected the ball, laid it on the glass, a terrific play. Gotta learn those little things, guys. Play this game, guys, ladies. Learn how to use the footwork to drop steps. Protect the ball, square the body. Balance. So that will bring Saar back in as Boston will return as well as Toppin picked up that foul. So we saw Fulkerson come in with six and a half minutes to go with four fouls. And Dick, now John Calipari responds with his big man, Olivier Saar, coming back in with four fouls with six minutes to go as well. Sarr's got to be productive now. He's got to be careful. They're moving screens. He's had two fouls called on moving screens. 
Fouled out in 12 minutes against Missouri. Eon Brooks pivots, sets up Boston. That comes up short. Eon Johnson the other way. That's too strong. Bad shot. Just a bad shot right there. Nance leaves one for the trailer, but Keon Johnson is there to swipe it away from Brooks. And at the oh, other end, it creates an easy two for Springer. Springer gets the deuce. What a terrific play right there. The defensive play was outstanding, and this game's getting away from Kentucky. You know what this game is reminiscent? You and I did the game, the Alabama game. Remember the Alabama game? Played him tough, and then at the end, Oh, look at this. He come back from the back, never gave up on the play. Made the play that led right there to the layup in transition. Tennessee showing now, showing now why they were rated so high earlier in the year. Deion Johnson, defense becomes offense, and our SEC Big 12 Super Tuesday doubleheader on ESPN. And the app begins at 7 Eastern with Arkansas taking on Kentucky right here at Rupp. And then it's the matchup of the night in the Big 12. Number 17, West Virginia, squares off against number 13, Texas Tech in Lubbock. A really good SEC Big 12 Super Tuesday doubleheader coming up this Tuesday night. Tell you one thing, McBride really playing well for Bob Huggins' club. By the way, you mentioned West Virginia. They have right now in practice. Shibway is right now with Kentucky. You know that, right? Bob, transfer from West Virginia. Well, yeah, he'll be eligible next season. They don't think they're going to get him eligible at any point this season. Oh, no, well, he yes, can't Oscar play this Shibway, year. Huh? Yeah, he, he's going to be an impact player for them when he eventually gets on the floor. Yeah, but he's going to help them big time in practice, they feel, on a daily basis. Yep. He can practice with the team. Nance with a running one-hander. That's pulled down by James. Kentucky all of a well, sudden has gone go. cold. It's got cold. They've turned the ball over. It took him take, I've taken some bad shots. Here's where I would take Fulkerson on the inside. I would give Fulkerson the some touches. Fulkerson tried to get a touch there and missed the alley-oop at the rim. Hey. Mintz weaves his way through traffic and comes up short. It's deflected out of Trying bounds, though, things... off Tennessee. Trying to make things happen there with that drive. I tell you, it's not a pretty time to be 5-11 and, and we're in a Kentucky uniform. I can tell you that. But earlier today, John Calipari, listening to his pregame radio interview, said they have worked on two things and two things only in practice the past couple of days. Turnovers, and they've only turned the ball over 11 times tonight. So it seems like Kentucky's been more careful with the ball. But this right here, the last four minutes, and how they have struggled to be in games and then close them out. We'll see if they can respond. A quick trigger in and out on the three from Dante Allen. They, they really struggled shooting the ball. Allen coming off the bench, the one guy that can't shoot it, but you sit a long time. You know, we mentioned they only got 11 turnovers, but you got 10 in the second half. They only won at the half. That's why they played a great first half. We're up 42 34, executed, we're efficient defensively as well. Another Tennessee tough shot in the lane by Jaden Springer. Tennessee has taken charge, and the reason? The diaper dandy. Springer, very aggressive offensively. Showed his strength as he goes to the basket as well. Then at IMG Academy here. It's only a short ride from my house. Boston tried to dunk it down, and that hit the back of the rim, and now Kentucky can't even finish when they're trying to dunk. They have scored six points in the last eight and a half minutes. And as a result, wow. Tennessee has completely flipped this game around to take a 10-point lead. See, here's where I feel a packed house of those Kentucky passionate fans could have really been a factor in this game. Could have been a factor. That silly foul that far from the basket. Springer with a foul in the backcourt of Devin Askew. Kentucky down 10. When the games have been close in the last four minutes, they've struggled. Can they try and author a different script in the last three plus minutes? We're about to find out. Game, Bob. 
Well, Kevin, normally Kentucky's in a close game in the last four minutes. And over their last five games, these statistics tell the story, Dick, about why they have struggled the way that they have. Basically, from this game being about 10 minutes to go or so down to the last four minutes, those same struggles have already plagued the Cats and have put them down by 10 with 313 to go. Is this a hole they can dig themselves out of? That's the problem they have all year. Getting that consistency. John is really frustrated about it. He's never been in a situation like this in terms of they play some really outstanding basketball, but they can't do it for the entire game. They went down, what was it? It's Notre Dame, like 21. Came all the way back with a brilliant second half. But they put themselves in a hole. They go through spurts. They go through spurts where they play so poorly after playing well. And right now you got Tennessee totally in control. You know, Tennessee played mostly without Fulkerson, without Viscovi. But they've got Keon Johnson, and he continues to knock down shot after shot. He after has shot. been electric tonight. 27 points for Keon Johnson. Johnson and Springer both have been electric. They got like, what? Did, I don't have the stats in front of me. They got about 45 in their points, do they not? 27 for Johnson, 23 for Springer. Quick math, I think that adds up to 50. 50. How am I doing? 50. Yeah, 50. See what happens when I hang out with a former elementary oh. math teacher? You know, you've taught me some things. Oh. I'll tell you this, Bob. 50 points out of the 76 <laughs> is incredible. Really a terrific job by the diaper dentist. Did they rise today? Where were they against Ole Miss? Johnson. That time comes up short. But James tries to run it down, loses it out of bounds. The last 18 points for Tennessee in this game have been scored by the combination of Johnson and Springer. Well, take a look at right here. Look at Springer. Look at a strong drive to the goal. I mean, he was just so strong to the basket. Askew, finger roll is good. He's done a really nice job today. Let's give the kids some credit. I mean, Askew's been really maligned big time by many of their people on social media. But today he has responded in a positive way. Good spacing against the trap. Rick Barnes, 7 and 5. Just, if he wins this and his holes out, it'll be his third win in Lexington. Four in Knoxville and one in down in Nashville in the tournament. Johnson splints the oh. double team. Vescovi oh. hits a three to beat the timer. Well, what a great play to beat the trap. You go diagonal. You look the opposite side from the trap and wide open. Great vision to make that pass. That was not an easy pass to make. Saar rattles right home there. a three. And it looks like John Saar Calipari gets... will spend his final time out here with 1.02 to go. But Tennessee with an eight-point lead. And it's time to check out our assist of the game. Brought to you by State Farm. Look at this right here. Johnson to spring a nice little play. The tandem, the two diaper dandies. What a duo. Look at these two guys racing to the goal. Man, if they stayed in school with the kid coming in next year, Chandler, are you kidding me? They'll be rocking and rolling in Knoxville big time. And unfortunately, the opposite is true this year for Kentucky. They are about to fall to 5-12 and 12 and lose the sixth of their last seven. And these are some of the headlines that have haunted this season for Kentucky as it's really been nothing but negativity in Big Blue Nation. Yeah, you know, really expect nothing but greatness there. There's no such thing when you wear a Kentucky uniform about, oh, we played them close. It's a great thing. We, oh, really? We were in the game. Oh, really? They don't want to hear that in Big Blue Nation. There's no such thing as a moral victory there. Look at now these score lows. As, yeah, they're averaging as few points per game as they have since the 84-85 season. Their lowest field goal percentage since the early 60s. This would be possibly the worst three-point shooting season that Kentucky has ever had. So wow. they've actually played at times pretty well defensively. Their defense has kept them in games, but they have struggled so mightily to score. And it's really a frustrating thing, I'm sure, for a Kentucky fan, Dick, to see them put together. And we saw tonight in this game moments where they had a double-digit lead. You thought this might be the night that Kentucky puts it together and wins a defining game, and yet here they are down by eight with a minute to go. Bob, the real problem is very simple. 
to be an outstanding team, to be an outstanding team on the collegiate level, you got to be strong in the perimeter. And they are not strong in the perimeter. There's a turnover right there, sloppy. Bottom line is, great teams have tremendous guard play, and they do not. And they've had great guard play over the years, as I told you, when they have guys like Wall and Ed Knight and Teague and all those great players, the Aaron Fox and Shea Gilkis, uh, Alexander, and then they had Ashton Higgins even last year, even though he had a subpar year for him. But the bottom line is, they've had great guard play. They do not have that. Hey, Bob, you, really you, know, Knicks fans, you know who Knicks fans are enjoying watching right now is Emmanuel Quickly. He has been tremendous. All right, yeah, let's go. Here, I'm ready. Come on. You, you want to throw ready? it to me? I'm gonna, look at this right now. Come on, man. I got to put my jer jersey on first. Hey, number 80, I'm wearing the wrong jersey. But you know what? They made me step in the back. They threw me the ball, and I'm making like a QB now. And we're choosing. He's making like my guy, Scotty Miller. Miller deep. Brady to Miller. Touchdown. Bucks win, baby. The Bucks win. How are yeah, Let's go, Bucks, baby. Let's go, Bucks. I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait to go there tomorrow, baby. You see this football? This football. Yeah, was what I've really game. needed in my life is another Tom Brady appearance of the Super Bowl. I think that's what our lives have all been lacking. Well, I, I'm really happy to see him back. <laughs> I am so happy. Greatest move ever the Bucks made. Look at this. One by 11. Rick Barnes feels pretty good about this, baby. Wow. A come from behind win for Tennessee over Kentucky for Dick Vitale and our entire crew. I'm Bob Wachusen. It's time to head out west. UCLA, USC with Bill Walton. Here's Dave Pash.